Let's go back a moment to that second lesson for our text today, 1 Corinthians 9. For if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have reward. But if not of my own will, I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make use of my right in the gospel. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Are you a driven person? What does it mean to be a, a driven person? A driven person is, is something that maybe has, has a certain thing inside them that just lights up their life. It's not a compulsion that they have to. Rather, it's a desire that leads them to concentrate and to focus all their efforts on reaching their goal. Driven people don't, they don't drift, they don't meander off. Driven people have a clear goal and they exert all their energies to achieve it. Obviously, if you read and paid attention to those words from our text, Paul was a driven person. He was driven to share the saving word of God with as many people as he could do so. Now, Paul didn't do this reluctantly. He didn't do it joylessly. He didn't phone it in. He didn't, didn't pretend it was his job. No, he did it as one who had an inner calling, a true divine mission. And actually, he did. We know where that started. See, he started out as Saul, remember? He was that rotten guy who hated Jesus, hated the apostles, hated the believers and was arresting them. But on his way to Damascus to throw more of them in prison, Jesus met him. Jesus knocked him to his feet, off his feet, and blinded him for several days. Jesus gave him a mission, you are going to go to the Gentiles. You are going to spread the gospel, the good news that I love even haters like you. When Paul, Saul, as he was first called, was baptized and became a believer, scales fell from his eyes and his heart was made new. He believed for the first time he was set free, not by his own actions, but what God had done for him. Jesus dying on the cross, that's what became Saul's treasure. That's what became Saul's driving mission. If God could save me, he said, this enemy who, who put people in jail where they died, he wants everybody. And so he bent his efforts. He went without food. He traveled many miles by sea and land. He was shipwrecked. He was attacked. He was beaten to nearly death and said, I, I don't care. It's so important that others hear who Jesus is, that he's their God, the only God, the only Savior. I don't care what happens to me. You've got to hear. You've got to know. You've got to live in Jesus Christ. You might say Paul became so driven, he poured out his life, not for silver or gold. He didn't care about the money. He wanted life for everyone as he had received it. Of course, Paul himself, in saying, I do this not for the fame, not for the money, he was himself just a reflection of the most driven person of all. Who was the most driven? Let's see. Someone who had everything to lose for something greater. Who was it that left heaven? Who was it that poured out all his rights he left glory, perfection. He left, he left the throne of the Father to come to earth in the form of a baby and to walk among people who rejected him and denied him. Well, Jesus was the most driven of all. What drove Jesus? Stop and think. Let's do a little bit of divine algebra. God is love. Jesus is God. So Jesus is love incarnate. Jesus is love and love does. Love gives. Love pours itself out for the beloved. Love says, whether they deserve it or not, I want the very best 
for the ones that I love. So Jesus, who lived with his Father in the realms of glory where no imperfection could possibly come, came to people who, who rejected him, who would finally beat him and, and spit on him and, and curse him. But they didn't do to him what we needed. Jesus told his disciples, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down, and I take it up again. So he wasn't made to carry that cross. He willingly carried our sins with that cross to Calvary. He willingly carried our sins on that cross and let them crush him because he was driven to do the one thing we could never do, set anyone who believes in him free from death and condemnation. Paul knew what it meant to be forgiven, even though he'd been an enemy of God. Have you realized yet that we're all born enemies of God? We're all born haters? We're all thinking we're our own God? And he still wants us? And he wanted us so much that he poured out his life? He was driven to give his all and rose again to show that his all is enough. It is sufficient to wipe away every sin in the eyes of God to make you and me new, to make us holy, to make us everlasting children of the Heavenly Father who will dwell with Him in glory one day where sin will never touch us again. And that is an amazing gift to have. We're children of God and we're new too. Like Saul became Paul, you and I are now children of the Heavenly Father. And if that doesn't drive us, how about His love? the love that has made us new, doesn't that make us want to say, I want to love you, Lord? We, we just sang, I love you, Lord. May my love be a sweet sound in your ear. That's from Psalm 147, our response from Psalm today. Good pitch, you know. But it's not just a love for God. Jesus said, if you love me, love the people I love. So we're driven to love people. You know, the ones who get in our way, the ones who can't drive right, the ones who haven't got the right cards at Walmart, the ones who aren't nice to us in school or talk behind our back at the office or just plain annoy us. But we're driven to say, because God loves them, so do I. Because they're precious to God, I'll forgive them. Because they're precious to God, I want to lift them and serve them. The love of God also drives us to say, it's not what's most important to me. Jesus didn't hang around and, and seek glory in, in the first town where he raised or where he healed a sick woman. He said, I've come that everyone, I have to go to all the villages, every place that people might know everywhere, that I love them and give everlasting life. So that becomes our purpose too. Yeah, I know we go to work, you got bills to pay, the mortgage, the car payment, the food, the the band trips, all that stuff. But that's only what we do while we're driven. We're driven to do those things in love to serve our family, to lift up the people in our community. We give to people who will never give a nickel back. We serve through the Women's Resource Center, the World Missions. We give because Christ's love drives us to want others in heaven too, to know the freedom of being set free from condemnation and death. We're driven to love. Love people who don't love us back, but that's okay. Christ loved us while we were yet sinners, and that love does transform people. And whether we see it in our lifetime or not, the love of God sets people free. That's the purpose for a congregation here. It's not just to have a warm place to be on a snowy day. It's to be built up as children of the King, the redeemed brothers and sisters of Jesus, the people in whom the Spirit of God dwells and makes us alive and makes us alive to live as His voices, as His hands, as His feet to go out and do the one thing He said, seek and save the lost because no one gets to heaven without Christ, and no one gets to heaven without hearing, because the Spirit uses words from imperfect people like you and me to change hearts, to change them from Saul's into Paul's, to change us from outsiders into beloved children of God. 
May God's love drive us to do the things we do, work, school, play, fish, golf, whatever you do, to do it to God's glory and to, to use it to bring people to Christ. We got Lent services coming up. Maybe you know someone who says, I'm not sure about church. You got to eat, right? Come to church. Come eat with us Wednesday night. And then there's a short service afterwards, real, real low-key, not scary. Bring somebody. Pass on a portal of prayer. Let them know that you're alive and you love them and you have joy because Jesus loves you and sets you free. Christ was driven to set us free. May his love drive us to want others to be free also. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.